Hey, what's up, guys? I'm um, here with another video. Uh, this is going to be graphing radical functions. Um, hey, I really hope you've been using the videos to your advantage as a resource, just as a resource, man, or a pre-course uh, before class. So uh, have a look, and I hope it helps. All right, let's see here. 9-2, graphing radical functions. Uh, essential question here. What is the visual representation of a radical function? All right, what is the domain range and transformations of a radical function? Remember that we solve the equation of the form x squared equals k by taking the square root. Actually, I'm going to type that in. There we go, like that, square root of each side. And um, equations of the form x cubed equals k by taking the cube root of each side. So let me type that in. All right, there we go, cube root on each side. All right. Um, square root functions are the inverse of quadratic functions, and cube root functions are the inverse of cubic functions, okay? All right, just, it just means that a square root, to undo a square root, you can take the cube root. I mean, to undo a, a square, you would take the square root. All right, and to undo a cube root or a cube, you would take the cube root like that, okay? That's all that's saying, all right? Now, um, let's go ahead and look at um, example A right here. It says compare the graph Compare the graph of the function f of x equals x squared. All right, so here I'm going to show you. I just want to show you what it looks like here. All right. Um. So what we want to do is, man, for doing this, I just want you to compare the graph. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to make a little chart just so I can show you. Um. All right, I'm going to just pick some values, all right, and I'll just go through. So negative 3, oh, x, y, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so I would plug all these x values here, so like negative 3 squared. Well, negative 3 squared is going to be 9. So you have negative 3, 1, 2, 3, up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, um, negative 2. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, 4. Negative 1 squared. I plug in negative 1 right here. So negative 1 squared is going to be positive 1. So negative 1, 1. 0 squared. 0 squared is going to be 0. So 0, 0. 1 squared is 1. 1, 1. 2 squared is 4. All right, 2, 4. And 3 squared is 9, so 3, 9, right? So here is this function graph right here, okay? Now, let's go over here. All right, if you have f of x equals plus or minus the square root of x, all right. So first of all, we got to address this. We've got to do two tables, one for plus the square root of x and what well, y equals plus the square root of x. And we got to do y equals minus the square root of x. OK, so let me make my table again so you can see it. Like so. So if I were to go zero, I was just going to show you zero, right? The square root of zero is zero, right? And I can only use perfect squares. So one's a perfect square, four is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square. The square root of one is going to be one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three, all right? And still, man, if you did the negative square root, right? 
Um, again, you can still only use perfect squares. Zero, one, two. I'm sorry, zero, four, nine. All right. So you have zero. All right. The square root of zero. The square root of zero is zero. Then you have the negative, so it's still zero. The square root of one is one, but you have the negative, so it's negative one. The square root of four is two, but you have the negative right here, so it's negative two. And square root of nine is three, but the negative is here, so negative three. So here is, let me graph it. We got zero, zero on both of those. Then one, one, so one, one. Negative one, excuse me, one, negative one. Then we have four, two. One, two, three, four, up two. And then you have four, negative two, so one, two. Then you have nine, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, nine, three, nine, negative three. All right, so here is the parabola for, oops, there's a parabola right there for the square root, the function f of x equals plus or minus square root of x, okay? Now, the reason I did that is because I just want to show you the difference. There's a difference in the, it's the inverse. All right, I just want to show you what's the inverse, okay? Now, let's go ahead and talk about the domain and range of each one. All right, um, the domain, if you look right here, the domain, see how infinitely I can keep going with any x value? Any x value will work. This thing will continue to get wide in both directions. So the domain, guys, is all real numbers. All right, the, the range, however, though, see, y can't be lower than zero. So the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero. For the domain, if you look for the x values, x can't be less than zero. If you think about it, the zero is the lowest per the lowest perfect square, and the square root of that value is zero. So um, the domain has to be x is greater than or equal to zero, while the range is going to be all real numbers. It's a continuum infinitely in that direction and that direction. All right, see how they're inverses of each other. All right, they're inverses of each other. Now, let's look right here for another example. The Q root of X, all right? The Q root of X. Um, I'm just gonna do it real quick. X, Y, right? Um, let's do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. The Q root here is gonna be negative eight. The X, see, negative two cube is negative eight. Negative one cube is negative one. Zero cube is zero. One cube is one. Two cube is eight. So we have negative two eight. Let me make this a little bigger so I can see. So negative two, two, four, six, eight. All right, and then negative one, one. Oops. Zero, zero, one, one, two, eight. All right, so here is. There is um, the x cube function graph, and the domain is going to be all real numbers for the domain and range. Anything cube is going to be all real numbers. All right, now for the cube root, I, I, I can only put perfect cubes over here on uh, the graph x and y. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, um, 1, and 8. The Q root of 8 is going to be negative, negative 8 is negative 2. The Q root of negative 1 is negative 1. The Q root of 0 is 0. The Q root of 1 is 1. And the Q root of 8 is 2. All right, and when you graph that, negative 8 up 2. Nope, negative 8, negative 2. Uh, negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0. 1, 1. And 8. Two. So here we go. Right there. So again, the domain and range are both all real numbers. It's cube. Anything cubic is all real numbers. All right. Cube root, cube, all real numbers. All right. I just want to show you this so you can see the inverse, okay? Now let's go ahead and flip over on the back. We got a couple rules right here. It says graph the radical function. 
excuse me, graphs of radical functions can be transformed using methods similar to those used to transform a quadratic function. Recall, right, that you have this right here, A, um, that's your, um, that's your um, vertical stretch or compression. All right, um, vertical stretch or compression. So here, let me show you. So what we got is this term right here for the vertical, uh, the vertical compression and the stretch. All right, goes here. All right, with a. All right, if a is whoa, hold on, this thing is tripping. It's on the fritz. If a is man, if a is greater than one. All right, then we're gonna have a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. If A is less than one, then we have, or a fraction. Greater than one, all right. Then you have a vertical compression. All right, and then right here with eight. With eight. You have um, a horizontal shift left or right, all right? And if H is positive, if it's plus H, it is shift left, all right? And then if it's minus H, then it's shift right, all right? And then finally, you got the vertical shift up and down, and that's K. All right, if it's plus K, you shift up, if it's minus K, down, all right? You go down, all right? And we'll talk in detail about this in a second, all right? The, la and the radical is the exact same thing. All those same rules apply. Vertical stretch and compression, shift left and right, shift up and down. The thing I want to notice is, see that K? It's not underneath the radical, okay? Now, this one over B right here, all right? Um, the rule about that is... Um, this one over B, all right, if one over B is greater than one, then there's a horizontal compression, which means a horizontal compression, which means whereas Y is going to compress inward, all right, it's going to compress inward, all right, the graph will get small, it'll compress, but if... So we'll say horizontal compression. And if one over B is less than one, then there's a horizontal stretch, which means the graph will get wider. All right, like this horizontal stretch. All right, and we just gotta practice, all right, so you can get this down. Now look, there is this chart right here. Let me zoom out so I can show you. This chart right here is really helpful because it explains the rules in detail. All right, so like plus K, you went up three units, minus K, or minus four, you went down. If you go minus H, that means you went to the right, right? Remember just like we just said, if you go plus H, you go to the left. If A is greater than one, there's a vertical stretch, which means it gets longer by that value. If A is less than one, it gets shorter. All right, compress. All right, and so on and so forth, man, right here. The main one is this right here. If, if the negative is outside the radical, it, it reflects the x-axis. So if it was like this, it would not be like this. And then if the negative is inside, then where it was like, let's say this, it will reflect over here. All right, it reflects the y-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis, okay? So let's just go ahead and do some transformations. All right, so let's describe the transformation and graph each function given the domain and range. All right, excuse me, give the domain and range. So remember the parent function is the square root of x. All right, square root of x. So this minus five right here, all right, is minus h, minus h. So remember, look at your chart right here. When you have minus h, minus h. If you go minus h, you use h units right, or those minus two, so two units right. Well, in this case, it's minus five. All right, minus five. So we're gonna go five units right. 
All right. And then right here, this two, that two is greater than one. All right, that's your A value. So remember, if A, where is it? A right here. If A is greater than one, right? Greater than one means there's a vertical stretch by that A value. So we have vertical stretch, vertical stretch two units. Two units. All right, vertical stretch two units, okay? And now, um, we graph it, okay? And you can use your calculator to graph this, but anyway, man, um, when you do it, all right, when you when you graph it, all right, so again, that equation was two times the square root of x minus five. So when you graph it, all right, you can use your table to pick your points, okay? And just pick points you can see, guys. All right, second table. All right, we got all those errors. Let's go down here where we start, and we can graph it on our graph. So we got five, zero, six, two, and nine, four. All right, I'm going to use those three. This one, this one, and this one right here. So when I go back, so again, I said five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, five, zero. Here, I'll write them down. Five, zero, um, six, two. And nine four. So six two six seven eight nine three four nine four. So there we go right there, okay? Whoop. All right. So now let's talk about the transformations. Let's put them down. We had a we wrote them up there, but I'm just gonna write it again. Vertical stretch. I two and horizontal shift. Uh, right five, all right, right five, and then the domain guys is the square root. So look at it. Here is the it can't go past this. So x is going to be uh, greater than or equal to five, and the range. See, this is zero. It's not going below zero, right? That's zero. So it's going to be greater than or y is greater than or equal to zero. All right. Now. Let's do the next problem. All right. Um, right here, we look at this right here. We have a negative out front. So that tells me it's going to be uh, reflect this negative right here out front. It says reflect the x axis. All right, which means it's going to open down. And then this one right here, see how that's outside the radical? So that's K, which means down seven. All right, and again, we just gotta practice these things, man, down seven. All right, so let's graph it. And again, you can use your calculator to graph this. All right, you, I encourage you to use your calculator to graph it. So negative Q root of X minus seven. So let's go there, calculator. So negative, negative. Look, listen, your Q root guys function. If you press math right here, all right, there's your Q root option four. The Q root of X. All right, then we go minus seven. Like that, and hit graph. All right, there we go, Q root. All right. So let's pick up some points. We'll go to our calculator. All right, let's get some points. So let's go, we need some negative points. So let's see, I think negative eight, five. So I do negative eight, five, one, negative one, six, zero, seven, one, eight. And I believe eight, nine was one I saw. Yeah, eight, negative nine. All right, eight, negative nine. So I'll write those down, but there we go. So again, those X values I saw were negative eight five negative five excuse me negative eight negative five hold on negative eight um negative one six negative six excuse me zero negative seven one negative eight and eight nine 
All right, like that. Okay. Negative nine, excuse me, negative nine. So here we go, let's graph it. Um, negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, negative one. Negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, man. All right, hold up. I got to regraph this. I made a mistake. So negative eight, one, two, three, four, five. All right, negative one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, zero, negative seven. Um, one, negative eight. And eight, negative nine. Right. All right, so there we go right there. All right. Okay, now, again, um, it's cubic, so you know your domain is going to be all real numbers. And your range is all real numbers because it's cubed, all right? X cubed and the cube root of X. All real numbers, domain and range, okay? All right, man. Well, yo, that's really it. I think, let me make sure. Yep, that's it, man. I have no more uh, for this unit. So what I want to do is just encourage you, man, to watch the video. Uh, pay attention in class, and we will get this corrected, okay? Um, I hope this helps, and I will catch you later.